Tune in to the Diva Hustle Show. Guys, thanks for tuning in to the Diva Hustle Show. Today, our guest is Brenda. She's the CEO of Stella PR. How are you, Brenda? I'm doing great. Um, thanks for joining. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, thanks for coming. So um, I wanted to talk a little bit about your background as a woman entrepreneur. Um, so if you could go in and explain your journey into the tech industry in 1985 and how you launched the AI robot robot program. And you was the only female uh, office officer. That's right. Um, it was really interesting times. It's very similar to today. You know, it was kind of like the dawn of the computing, the personal computing age, mm -hmm. um, where people were starting to get computers into their home, even if they were gaming, like Atari or whatever. But um, it was kind of that same thrilling, anticipatory uh, chill you get when you think to yourself, okay, you know, computers are coming into our world. Well, now we're kind of like at that next level where AI is kind of coming into our world. But um, real brief background on myself, I started out as a newspaper reporter um, and I have a journalism degree. And I, I moved into the world of PR because I thought that we could do a better job in public relations, working with media and you know, bridging that gap. Mm -hmm. So I was lucky enough to work for a top 10 PR agency. And I was put on General Motors and all of these really interesting high-tech accounts. And one of them was um, launching the world's first robotic programming language. Okay. And I really saw the chilling effect that it had on the industry because here was a machine that someone, I mean, it was easy to program. You could do it in English and say, move right, move left, pick this up. And I thought, Wow, you know, here we go. And here we are, um, almost, well, more than three decades later, and um, it's coming into our homes. You know, we have Roombas. Um, <laughs> we have little robot servers and restaurants. So it's it's kind of, it's interesting because there's things that is very polarizing, right? There's some people who think that, um, oh, no, this is the end of the world, right? And then other people are embracing it. Yeah. And so um, how did you navigate how did you navigate the challenges and this discriminatory uh, um, ob objectives when you were pursuing working in a male dominating field? Oh, um, I have some stories that will make your hair curl. So right. um, I was put on the Uniroyal account, Uniroyal Tires. Okay. And um, I was charged with writing a story about how Uniroyal was going to uh, invest in, start using just-in-time barcode inventory. So, you know, like you go to the grocery store, right? Um, and so I was brought into the office of the head of um, supply uh, automation. And when I sat down in his office, he laughed. And he said, she's going to write it? Like, that's a joke. So um, I just started to, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was really blatant at that time. There were, they weren't transparent about it. I was the only woman usually in the room at any given time. Right. But my father um, worked on the NASA program. And he was scientist, and he brought me up to be very independent and very confident in my abilities. And um, he mentored me. So I always position myself with, you know, I'm here to help, right? And I'd like to help you with this story, so let me write this. So I just started asking him questions, like, you know, tell me about the production facility. Um, I know that um, production and tires is uh, very, um, very intense on quality control. So he was impressed. Mm -hmm. So I won him over. But basically, I just ignored it um, and just kept right on with my North Star of um, how can I serve? How can I help? Um, so that, that kind of kept me um, through all of the discriminatory uh, kind of events that I went through. 
And what advice would you give to women that are looking to work in a technology field um, and don't know how to navigate the male dominating field? Um, what's really, really interesting is I'm I'm shocked that I'm still having this conversation, right, with someone thirty years on. Yeah. In a way, that's disheartening, yeah. right? Because it's really about what you bring to the table, what you can offer. Um, shouldn't matter. Anything else shouldn't matter. Right. So um, I just assume that it doesn't, right? I don't. I just don't acknowledge that. And I rise above it. And the way that I do that is um, I think to myself, I'm here for a reason. I was brought in because of my expertise, my experience, um, my education. And then I just act on that. And then if they have a problem with that, you know, <laughs> I, I can't do anything about that. Right. But I've been lucky enough to work with people like Bill Gates and Mark Cuban. Okay. And um yeah, some really, and Steve Wozniak is a good friend. So I think no matter what field you're in, um, you know, I think if you enter a room from the point of view of I'm here to help, how can I help? Mm -hmm. uh, I think that that kind of wins people over. Yeah, so that's my advice. Mm -hmm. And just keep plugging away, believe in yourself. That's what's most important. So tell us a little bit about um, Stella PR. Um, what are some of the services that you offer? Um, we're a full service boutique public relations agency. We offer all of the uh, boxes and PR. Um, and we go a little beyond that as well. Um, because I've been a corporate officer and I've done um, funding rounds, we also assist with introductions into the VC world as well. And um, yeah, so we're kind of the um, a la carte menu, uh, the, the cheesecake factory of PR, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a lot of uh, different um, activities on our menu. But I think what we bring to clients most of all is um, our experience and the context of having been in um, public relations in high tech for so long. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, our... Um, we have all of the heavy hitting influencers on speed dial, if you were. <laughs> right. So we're known and we have a reputation for um, just really um, being great storytellers and getting your brand and your message across in a way that's meaningful to the media as well. And so as your um, opinion, when do you feel companies or let's say influencers should reach out to companies like Stellar, like your company for PR services? Um, you know, really, I think most people are a little late to go into considering public relations and those types of activities. Okay. The companies that I have um, worked with have been most successful start early with public relations. I'll give you an example. Um, there was a husband and um, wife doctor team who had developed the first telemedicine platform. And this was 12 years ago before mm -hmm. even any of us thought about telemedicine. And they, they hired us right out of the gate. So we were able to really go out there and um, give their voice that thought leadership because people had never even heard of telemedicine yet. And they said, this is the first time I'm hearing of it. So anyway, so because they went early, they had that mind share, the majority mind share of telemedicine um, with their audience, which I think is really important. So, you know, kudos to them for recognizing that. Sometimes if you wait too late, your competitor or someone else has already, right, jumped into the game right. and gotten a head start on that thought leadership. Yeah. And because... So you can never be too you can, go ahead, I'm sorry. You can never be too, you can never be too early. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because, I mean, I feel like some businesses, they feel like, you know, most of the time you'll see them, this is a big launch that they're doing, um, a new product, or they're rebranding, or maybe it's a PR crisis. That's when they're like, we have to get someone in PR to clean this mess up. Um, what's your right. Yeah. <laughs> what's your opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, um, there's this age-old story, 
and it still applies today. It's a little antiquated, but um, my mentor told me, here's the difference between advertising, publicity, and public relations. So a circus is coming to town. So um, you want to promote it. So you put up posters, you know, or on social media. Hey, you know, uh, <laughs> circus is coming. And then publicity is, um, you know, you do a stunt. Like maybe you, you walk the elephant through town, you know, and it's one of those, I guess you could say you could do TikTok, right? <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Um, you know, virtual but public relations is when the elephant goes through, you know, the mayor's prize rose garden, destroys it, and he comes out and he laughs about it. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference is that um, when you are actively engaging with the media before something goes wrong, you've already established that trust, right, and that goodwill. So if something does happen, you have that to fall back on, right? right. Okay. Yeah. So I think that's why it's really important. Um, I have another good example of that. Um, when I was um, at the, the Inc. 500 company I built, we were very successful. And I went to um, the other co-founders and I said, all right, you choose a charity, you choose a charity. You know, it's time to give back to the community. Um, let's do good. You know, we've been we've been rewarded um, abundance, right? Let's go do good in the community. So people, not only did we want to do it, but people had a good feeling about the company that we were giving back. And this was before there was really a whole lot of, um, uh, you know, um, activity around um, doing good and the environment and giving back and, you know, being a good citizen corporate citizen, but I think those are really important things to do because we're all in this community together. Right. 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 Yeah. So it was a little ahead of its time, but I was proud of that um, initiative that we did. So I know that earlier on, you mentioned storytelling. Um, the role of storytelling is important in public relation, right? So yeah. how does that navigate when you're dealing with a client trying to reach their target market? Our target target audience. Well, you know, I think one of the most important things to do is to be closely engaged with the thought process around um, storytelling mm -hmm. with the client. Um, and and we think like, you know, we just say we're a sponge. Just tell us everything that's going on because a lot of times the client wouldn't consider something that they're doing important or right. interesting. Um, and you'd be really surprised how many times, you know, we've had a client say, well, we didn't think to tell you that. Like, well, we're glad you did because <laughs> this is of interest to the community. But it's also um, a two-way street. We're very um, close to the media. We know what's trending, what kind of themes and um, stories are coming down, you know, the, the river here. So mm -hmm. we'll go to client and we'll say, you know, we're seeing an uptick in this type of a story or this trend. Are you think you do have a roadmap around any of that? So it's a constant process of collaboration and alignment. Wow. And so as far as in public relations, I understand the field can be very competitive. So how is Stella um, Public Relations staying ahead of the competition? Um, I think one of the things, and, and we never think that way, so maybe that's why, um, <laughs> we are always thinking, how can we best serve the client and the media and um, make a bridge between the two? So we're educating and informing the public, and also the company is successful in doing so. Um, so I guess one of the things that we do do is we run – our public relations agency like a newsroom. So okay. because I have that journalism background and the newsroom experience, I'm always um, thinking of ways that um, stories can align and opportunities can align with those stories so it best serves the public, the media, and the client. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a balancing act, but it's, a, it's an important one, and it's a successful one. I have a really great um, example of that as well. I had a client who um, was 
in the business of um, preventing ransomware mm -hmm. for companies. And right before COVID-19, one of their customers, a new customer, wanted to um, speed up the timeline to implementation. It was the largest hospital in New York because they didn't want to risk going down during COVID you okay. know, because it would have been very bad. So they did so. And I thought to myself, well, you know, if a bad actor would take down a hospital during COVID, you know, they might go after Pfizer, who's right. trying to develop a vaccine. So I went to my friend at CNBC and I said, you know, you guys need to do a story about this because I don't want the bad guys to think that nobody's watching this. Right. Said, Let's do a story on um, how companies like Pfizer, they have to be protected against ransomware because they're doing important work that it will save lives. Yeah. So it ran on the front page of CNBC website. Um, they interviewed the CEO of Pfizer. They interviewed my client about how to prevent ransomware. So really, we have a higher calling. We, okay. we think in terms of, you know, how can we prevent um, bad guys from winning, right. you know? Yeah. And we're lucky in that because of our success and our reputation, we get to work with like the most disruptive clients that are doing incredible, great things. So it really, you know, it's exciting. And so um, what do you see the upcoming trends, in your opinion, what do you see the upcoming trends or shift in public relations um, going to be? Definitely um, scaling with AI. Okay. Is going to be the big one. I give... Um, PR webinars on how to implement and scale with AI because it can automate a lot of just runtime PR tasks. Mm -hmm. Everyone thinks PR is glamorous, but there's a lot of footwork to it. Right. Um, so, I mean, I really think that these automated assistants, and that's what I call them because some people think AI is scary, but, um, you know, they can compile reports and, for instance, I just had a client that wanted to see what their share of voice was in the marketplace compared to competitors. Mm -hmm. And the AI did all of that for me, created a graphic. I just plugged in some data. Yeah, so it's it's really handy. And I think what it does is it frees you up more for the creative process. Right. That's the fun part of public relations as well. And lastly, what advice do you have for aspiring public relations professionals looking to make a mark in the industry based off of your personal journey and experiences as a, as a CEO? Um, you know, I think it's to be really open-minded mm -hmm. and, um, and just be hungry for knowledge. And really, the person who's very... Uh, outgoing and seeks relationships and wants to collaborate with others and is open-minded, I think is the one who will be most successful in the field. Okay. Um, you have to have an insatiable curiosity for the world, right? Mm -hmm. And that will lead you to, you know, your success for sure. And if people wanted to get in contact with you, what's the best way of getting in contact to schedule a consultation or just to find out more about the webinars that you um, that you offer? Sure. Um, I prefer my LinkedIn profile. Okay. And it's my first and last name, Brenda Christensen, and you'll find me. So um, that's the best way to get a hold of us. Um, and And it's really interesting because the whole world is – gone through so many shifts, right? We have personal computing and then we have social media and now we have AI. So they're all merging together. And um, I think what's going to be really exciting for the future is for people to be open-minded and embrace, you know, automated assistance and AI. And they're just going to open up the world for everyone. Yeah. And I think democratize um, even further um, opportunities for everyone, no matter where you are in the world, right? <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Yeah, and for success too, right? Yeah. There are stories of people who are using AI to be successful entrepreneurs, right? right. And that wasn't even possible a year ago. So. Yeah, I mean, even now, you can, if you want a logo, there's an AI program for that. 
even like for me for podcasting there's this one ai program where i can upload the video and they'll take the best parts of the interviews and i push those uh -huh. on social media so you know it's just i think you, you can't really listen to me at my opinion is you can't listen to the negative just try it yourself you know what i mean yeah. and and yeah. see what works for you and it's so fluid and open. Everyone has a different way of interacting with it, right? right? So I never set down, when I give my um, webinars, I never set down any kind of hard and fast rules. I say, well, this is how I interact with it. And I'm open to learning from others. There's another um, gal that was on the webinar, and she uses it for research. And it was just brilliant the way that um, the, she prompted it to bring in some research for insight. When, in ways I would have never imagined. So, yeah. and I love that you you name your yeah AI. I I, I have to try that. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I call it chatty. I say okay. chatty. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it a little less, little less, you know, weird. But yeah. um, yeah, I mean, because the thing is, is it puts it in perspective, right? I mean. I don't want people to ever be afraid of technology. My whole career has been around getting people online to collaborate and share ideas and um, positive stories around the world to bring us all together and help each other grow. So I think that, you know, if we look at AI as an assistant to that, right? right it's, it's not as scary. Yeah. And I, I'm here yeah. to, I'm here to share that, um, from someone who programmed a robot, you know, <laughs> 30 years ago and saw what it did, I thought, okay, well, here we go. It's going to come into our homes. So, I mean, it's it's kind of like the Roomba of your office, right? You don't have to vacuum. Right. <laughs> you know, you let your room run. You, you know, it's the same with you, right? It's the same with your work, you know? It's like, okay, I'll let, I'll let the Roomba, you know, compose all these emails for me that I have to send out. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Brenda, for stopping past. We appreciate you coming and talking with us about your journey and giving us a better insight on public relations. Um, anytime that you want to come back and talk with us, we're always here. Just hit us up. All right. Well, thank you. And it was a pleasure. And I appreciate the opportunity. No problem. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Tune in to the shop. Diva hot show, motivate the glow. We get your mouth and fall. Sleep to my head and toe. I let the whole world know. I let the whole world know.